Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got another installment of This Week in EDM, but it is These Weeks in EDM as we are going over the last two weeks that came out, uh, new music, and uh, because I missed a week, and so we're going over two full weeks here, 39 songs we're going to talk about, hopefully there's something that you find interesting to um, listen to in this uh, video, but uh, we are going to start, we got all five categories in the trash category this week, just one song in trash, and it is the new Marshmallow song, I'm not going to bother trying to pronounce the title, but it is by Marshmallow, uh, Trop Killers, and MC Deluxe. A genuinely one of the most poorly produced tracks I have heard this year. The bass is overblown and sounds like a stock garage uh, garage band sound. The vocals are gross. I genuinely think this song is literal trash, literal garbage. Um, let move into the bad category. Uh, bad category. And just a reminder, these songs, my opinion, all my opinion. Um, we've got uh, The World Has a Heartbeat by Vice Tone, uh, another safe and boring Vice Tone track. I genuinely do not understand why they are making this copy-paste music when they have a full discography full of, you know, some of the best house music, I think, out there. So I just, I don't get it. Their new sound is bland, and it's just not working for me. Uh, then actually, we've got Repeating by Punctual. Uh, this has got to be Punctual's least interesting song since joining Monster Cat. Uh, the drops and off drops feel like completely different tracks. The synth melodies aren't just, are, aren't that all interesting. And um, yeah, I don't know. This one just, just didn't land for me, didn't work. I didn't mind the other stuff as much, but this one was like, oh, I was like, I didn't even not, not like it. I just genuinely thought it was bad. But again, just my opinion. They've got Yesterday by Tiesto. Uh, this is pretty much a dull good boys ripoff um, with a lower lower registered slap house sound to it um, that is very common with that kind of uh, production style and when you're trying to rip off good boys. So not a, not a fan. Uh, then we got We Need a Doctor by Lil Texas and Must Die. Uh, I mean, this is really just your standard hardcore beat and song. Uh, not really sure what the song was going for in particular. It's honestly more on the annoying side than it is on the pleasing one. And uh, I don't mind like hardcore style songs, but this one just was like, okay, this is just this is just kind of boring too. So. Uh, and the last song in bad, we've got Hurricane by Barton Garrix and Sentinel featuring Bomb. Uh, this felt like a severely outdated track to me with subpar mixing. Sounds like it was ripped off of a 10-year-old CD that I would find in my car after so long. Um, it's just not that interesting in today's musical landscape, especially in-house. Then we're moving into the meh category songs that I thought were uh, just meh. Uh, we've got Lost in the Rhythm by David Guetta and Morton. Uh, I'm glad we're at a point now with uh, Guetta and Morton collabs that uh, they're just boring and they're not the literal worst thing in EDM. And uh, that's what I'll say. And they've got Happy Song by Ray Volpe. Multi-layered, multi, multi genre This track offers quite a bit. I do appreciate all that it's trying to accomplish, and I didn't mind the kind of playful, happy, and angry gimmick to it, but I just found the hits to be a little bit too flat and dull, and Ray Volpe's style hasn't generally been for me, and so uh, that's why I think it's just meh. Then we've got Self-Destruction Mode by The Chainsmokers featuring Blood Nymph. Uh, the vocal processing and lyrical narrative is, is quite bland, as you would get from Chainsmokers, but honestly, this is some of the best production in The Chainsmokers in years. It actually sounds pretty clean and fairly unique, and I would say, way to go, Chainsmokers. Then we've got Quick Highs by Kirby featuring Helen. Uh, I felt the track was a bit too repetitive in both its lyrics and beat. I just wasn't all that really exciting of a song for me with fairly dull production in the end. And um, yeah, didn't think it was horrible, but I just thought it was meh. Then we've got Harry Styles by Martin Jensen. I know the naming of that is a little confusing, but uh, the lyrics are really silly, and I don't like when people kind of use the name power of another artist just to kind of boost their song up. Uh, but yeah, no, other than that, the production is just a bit more interesting than your basic kind of pop slap house, uh, which is mainly attributed to the kind of horn section instrumentation, so... Then we've got Don't Look Down or Hold On uh, by Excision Woolly and Kodeko. I say it over and over again because I literally don't know what else to say about the songs. It's just uninteresting mellow dub. Uh, it's got a very excision kind of hardcore final drop uh, to finish the track off, but it's just, I don't know, it's just boring to me. Then we've got Ready For It by Muzz featuring Skyel, the cover of Taylor Swift's original Ready For It from her Reputation album. Uh, this sounds like all the most kind of basic aspects of Muzz and his discography, like all of his kind of signature sounds, but just the most basic idea thrown on top of a cover. Um, and people have been asking for it, so I get the, the song and the way it is, but uh, I just thought it was meh. 
Then we've got Pirate King by Ramesses B featuring Eerie. Uh, but if you're grimer, a uh, bit of a grimier take on Ramesses B's uh, D&B here, uh, obviously the very clearly pirated theme of the track with its uh, predominantly woodwind sounds and melodies. And um, I did enjoy it. And we've got Surrender by Good Boys, the most vanilla sound from Good Boys uh, in a long time. Uh, it's hard to hate it, uh, but it's really hard to love it as well, too. Uh, it offers so little in both that it's, it's sorry, it offers so little in both its production and lyrics. It's just, um, it, it's just meh. It's just meh. And then we've got Sin by Rosie. Um, you know, fairly standard hybrid trap here that you'll find on Sable Valley. Uh, nothing to write home about, but you'll still... Uh, really, really enjoy it if you are a trap head for sure. And is it Rosie or Rossi? I, I feel like it's I feel like it's R Rosie. I don't know. They've got Loser by Tynan. Uh, feels like this belonged on the most recent Oddball EP from Tynan. Uh, the laser synths and walls of bass aren't too much my style. It's a little bit more of a kind of muted Britom, I would say. And uh, not bad, uh, but I do think it should have just uh, been on the Oddball EP, I think. And then we got Mayday by Slippy Exod, Eggs God, <laughs> Diandra Fay. Um, for Slippy in particular, this is more kind of a subdued sound for him and leans more into that kind of melodic bass genre than purely trap, which Slippy done, does a lot. But I just kind of felt over or underwhelmed by this track. Um, I'm not really sure why. Maybe it was just a little bit too formulaic for me. And I feel like Slippy hadn't really changed it up. And even though there was as got on here and Diandra Fay, I don't know. I just, uh, I just thought it was a little bit too uh, by the books. Then we've got Miracle, the MK remix by Calvin Harris and Ellie Golding. Uh, this is a simple progressive house remix of the original, uh, more of a club sound versus the kind of radio original. I much preferred the original, but yeah. Then we've got Fall by Skylar. The Blue Dream EP is out now on Monster Cat. And uh, I enjoyed most of the EP uh, up to this point. I haven't given a full listen yet, but um, felt like this one track in particular didn't really offer anything special in comparison to the rest of the songs that I'd heard, the rest of the singles released beforehand. Um, I don't know, just the, the melody structure and sound design felt very, very, very similar to the other ones. But that being said, I didn't not like it. I did enjoy it, but I just felt like, okay, I just feel like I'd heard it before, so... Uh, then we got Halo by Pendulum and Bullet for My Valentine. Uh, this feels like a bit of a throwback track for Pendulum, uh, despite it being like, I don't know, it is and isn't, and it's just weird. It just it just feels dated. It doesn't feel like a classic. It kind of feels just a little bit more dated on that end. But um, yeah, bringing on Bullet for My Valentine makes it a little bit more of an aggressively loud song, which I don't mind from Pendulum and the DNB, which kind of drumstep uh, sound. But uh, yeah, in the end, I just thought it was meh. Then we've got Art of Letting Go by Nurko featuring James Gillespie. Uh, this is a part of the new Discovery EP out now, uh, but I uh, really love the vocals on this cut in particular, but I felt like the song just had uh, more to offer than it actually gave us. Uh, the, the whole song had about like 30 seconds of, of like drop in it, and the first drop was like only eight bars. It was just, it felt like there was, there was more to be had uh, on the song. Uh, then we've got Astral by Pixel Terror and Kill and Void featuring Dyson. Uh, the song feels a little lost to me. I don't know how to quite describe it, but the Eurocore second half um, felt really off with its syncopated beat. Uh, but it just, when it's paired with the first drop, it just, I don't know, it just didn't, the, the, the one to two just felt really weird and not quite cohesive and it didn't really know what it wanted to do. That being said, I did enjoy the song generally, but... Uh, but then we're moving into the good category now. Songs that I thought were uh, good. Uh, what I Wanted by Jaws is first. And this is a kind of short bass house track with a commanding bass line. Uh, I don't like how short it is, but uh, it does, does slap. So uh, I did like that. Then we've got Patron by Dioro and OK. This is a weird Electro House reggaeton hybrid. And uh, honestly, it kind of slaps. Uh, it's short and sweet, but would definitely uh, do well at a festival. They've got Skydiver by Mega Neko. Uh, I feel like I'm trapped inside of an 8-bit video game that's slowly transforming into a modern one with this track. Um, great synth patterns, ripping solos, uh, really a video game lover's dream of a track. They've got Corruptor by Cage. Uh, the yeah Distortion compilation is out on Riot Villain. This is one of the tracks on that. Uh, kind of all your iconic bass house sounds with Cage that you would normally get, but with a kind of simple looping synth melody on top, which uh, was a little bit different from what I'd uh, heard in the past, and I, uh, I enjoyed it. 
Then we've got My Way to You by No Mana featuring Oliveira. Uh, another brilliant blend of electro and progressive house from No Mana. Oliveira's vocals felt really pure on this track and was just overall a very, very happy tune, I would say. Uh, then we've got Jellyfish Jam by Boxcar, who is indeed Boombox Cartel, just different alias. Uh, lots of neat panning and bouncing around in the beat to give a kind of audible illusion of like swarms of jellyfish kind of bobbing in the ocean. It reminds me a lot of um, Finding Nemo. Uh, but yeah, it's a quaint track that relies a lot on its unique sound design, and uh, I enjoyed that. Then we've got Dance the Night by Dua Lipa from the new Barbie soundtrack. Uh, Dua Lipa, some of the best dance pop out there right now. And uh, production-wise, production wise, it gave me a lot of Daft Punk Ram vibes, actually, with its dominant strings and predominant and prominent, sorry, bass guitar line. Uh, it reminded me a lot of Daft Punk, um, but uh, not nearly as good. Daft Punk is way better. And uh, then we got Could This Be, the Sleep Net remix originally by Noisia. The Resonance 6 kind of remixes compilations out from Noisia now. And uh, yeah, this has got some deadly drum and bass to it with a dark atmosphere. A very, very dynamic track that has lots of kind of ebbs and flows throughout. And um, I really enjoyed it. Then we've got Sirens, the Tourist remix originally by Flume featuring Caroline Polacek. Uh, the Palaces remixes part three is here now. And uh, this is kind of more of a free-flowing garage remix of the kind of more wonky original. Uh, very dreamy production on the outro that I wish was played a little bit more around with on the main section of the track, but uh, still, still a neat one and uh, I enjoyed it. Then we've got Closure by Matt Zoe. Uh, super catchy. It's kind of a pseudo nostalgic track with bright melodies and a kind of Tame Impala esque vocal. Um, yeah, the bridge sections are really fascinating, sound design in particular, and I thought they were the best parts of the track. Then we've got Bring the Color by San Holo featuring Aurora. Uh, with more of a driving bass line, this is a bit of a change in style for San Holo while still keeping true to his signature sounds and um, soundscape, I should say. Uh, I enjoyed the vocals, uh, but would have wished there for a, kind of like a third movement that is very, that's not uncommon for San Holo. It kind of has these long, multi uh, movement, long winded tracks. And uh, this one just uh, felt like it needed that, it needed an extra minute, I think, on it. And then we got Neck Snap by Company and Boss Fight. Absolutely grimy, dirty dubstep track. Uh, killer team up. This is not my usual flavor of dubstep that I really enjoyed, but um, this one, uh, this one goes hard. And I keep saying, I feel like I say that every time with like Boss Fight. It's not my usual that I enjoy, but I'm, I think I just like Boss Fight. <laughs> Um, then we've got Sorry by Hello World. Uh, Things I Want to Text You EP is out now on Bitbird, and uh, with heavily distorted bass hits uh, and really crisp synth leads, it makes for a very dynamic track. Uh, one of my favorites from the EP for sure. And our last song in good is Don't Know If You Know by Drinks On Me. The Rebellion EP is out now, and this track in particular is a really gripping garage uh, sound, really gripping garage track with great sound design and a very playful vocal chop, uh, one of my favorites from this EP in particular. And we are moving into the standout category. I got two songs in standout that I thought were fantastic. One from last week, one from this week. And first off, we've got Sea Delight by Swedish House Mafia featuring Friday. Uh, deep and full bass line as the driving force on this track. Um, they have perfectly mimicked what the subs feel like in a packed out arena. It's a really hard sound to kind of mimic and mirror into a kind of listening at home experience, but they did a great job with that. Um, as with all kind of classic Swedish House Mafia tracks, it's got that kind of long, really long, grand build that just builds with great anticipation. Um, I love the track, but the kind of simple noted synth uh, feels a little tad out of place, the kind of little bit of a loop. Uh, I feel without it, this would have easily landed in my year-end list. With with it, it kind of, uh, I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, I don't know, that just, that one, just that bright little synth hit just feels really out of place um, in the back end of both drops, but... Uh, the number one track of the last two weeks that I found, at least, uh, that I enjoyed was In Motion by Ford and A Beacon School. Uh, this is Garage at its finest, I must say. Uh, ethereal production with a killer beat all around. Um, this is just a, a vibe of a track, an absolute vibe. Killer, I love Garage, I love the kind of trip-hop, trip-chill sound, and this is that 280. But, um, yeah. Uh, let me know what you guys think of these songs in the comment section below. I'd love to hear any and all uh, opinions on anything about this week. But other than that, I've been Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I will see you guys in another video.